Good afternoon and welcome to the 1967 baseball season. Oh, I don't know why they're waving, but I think they do anyways. So this is what happened in 1967. January 23rd, Stan Musial is named general manager of the St. Louis Cardinals. January 29th, Branch Rickey and Paul Wehner are elected into the Hall of Fame by the Veterans Committee. February 16th, Red Ruffin, Red Ruffing, elected into the Hall of Fame by the Baseball Writers Association of America. April 14th, Billy Rohr of Boston has a no-hitter going into the ninth inning. And he was one strike away from getting it. And it gets broken up in his debut, no less. Yeah, it's one strike from a no hitter on his debut and have it broken up. A week later, he, he beat the Yankees at Yankees team. A, a week later, against the same Yankees at Fenway, he throws a complete game against them, winning. The only two wins he has that season. And I looked up his stats, he pitched once in the 67 season in Boston and 68 in Cleveland. Goes 3-3. Three and three. So there you go. Okay, April 20th, Tom Seaver wins his first game in a 6-1 win over the Cubs. I think he was with the Mets. May 14th, Mickey Mantle hits number 500. I wonder if he cleared the roof when he did that. I don't know. June 18th at the Astrodome. Houston's Don Wilson no hits Atlanta 2 0. It is the first winner. It is the first no hitter in a dome stadium. The Houston Astrodome. And it was also the first no hitter on AstroTurf. July 4th, the Nico brothers face each other in Atlanta. Phil, pitching for Atlanta, beats Joe, pitching for Chicago, 8-3. July 11th at Anaheim, National League 2, American League 1. That's the All-Star game. The longest All-Star game at 15, at 15 innings and 3 hours, 41 minutes. That's crazy. Somebody's using a blender upstairs if you're hearing that. July 14th, Houston's Eddie Matthews hits home run over number 500 off one Marichal. So he has a one Marichal ends up in the Hall of Fame. It's the first time a future Hall of Famer serves up a home run number 500 to somebody. And get your scorecards out for this one. After two rounds of votes, the American League owners voted to move the A's from Kansas City to Oakland in time for the 1968 season. So, tomorrow's video is going to have the A's in Oakland. And the, th that vote also paves the way for a future expansion in Kansas City. And apparently the A's owners had met in Seattle and ended up deciding on Oakland instead. So, eventually... Uh, the expands into Kansas City and Seattle. And, and Seattle ends up a gong show. And it's not the Mariners. Mariners starts. It's another Seattle team that you'll find out. Anyways, season stats. In the American League, Carl Yastrzemski of Boston finishes the season at top with a 326 batting average. First in the American League. Yastrzemski and Harmon Kellerbrew of Boston each hit 44 home runs. Led the majors. And Yastrzemski completes the Triple Crown with 121 runs batted in. Led the majors. So there's your American League batting Triple Crown winner. Pitching. Jim Lonborg of Boston and Earl Wilson of Detroit each had 22 wins. Now they're part of the three-way tie for Major League lead in wins with 22. Geez, I wonder who the third one is. Well, let's find out. 
finish off the American League, Joe Holden, Joe Horlin of Chicago, the White Sox, 2.06 ERA, led the American League. Jim Lonborg of Boston led the American League with 246 strikeouts. National League bat batting, Roberto Clemente of Pittsburgh, 357 average, led the majors. Hank Aaron of Atlanta, 39 home runs, led the National League. And Orlando Cepeda of St. Louis, 111 RBIs, led the majors. No, led the National League. Yes, Stremski led the majors. Pitching, wins. Mike McCormick of San Francisco, 22 wins. And there's a third member of the three-way tie for Major League lead. Earn run average. Phil Necro of Atlanta, 1.87, led the majors. And Jim Bunning of Philadelphia, 257 strikeouts, led the majors. We now do the season standings. With the American League, oh, it came down right to the last three or four days of the season. Literally. So let's find out what happened. Boston wins the American League pennant. The American Red Sox. They went from last the season before to first in this season. Boston ends up finishing first with a 92-70 and 70 record. Detroit and, fin Detroit and Minnesota finish at finished second each with 91 wins and 71 losses, one back. Chicago was fourth with 89 and 73, three back. Four teams within three games at the end of the season. Yeah, that was close. There could have been a four-way tie. That playoff would have been, uh, yeah. California Angels, 84 and 77, seven and a half back. Washington and Baltimore each had seven, went 76 and 85, 15 and a half back. Cleveland goes 75 and 87, 17 back. Yankees, 72 and 90, 20 back. And Kansas City, the, the A's last season in Kansas City, 62 and 99, 29 and a half back. National League, St. Louis Cardinals, 101 wins, 60 losses. The National League wasn't even as close. San Francisco went 91 and 61, 10 and a half back. Chicago goes 87 and 74, 14 back. Cincinnati goes 87 and 75, 14 and a half back. Pittsburgh goes 82, no, that's Philadelphia goes 82 and 80, 19 and a half back. Pittsburgh went 81 and 81. 20 and a half back. Atlanta goes 77 and 85, 24 and a half back. LA goes 73 and 89, 28 and a half back. Houston goes 89 and 69 and 80. Houston goes 69 and 93, 32 and a half back. And the New York Mets go 61 and 101, 40 and a half back. And now we go to the World Series. So Boston versus St. Louis. And Boston's home games were at Fenway Park. And St. Louis's home games were at Bush Stadium. And game 1 on October 4th in Boston. Cardinals 2, Red Sox 1. Game 2, October 5th. Boston evens it with a 5 nothing win. At home. Game 3 on October 7th in St. Louis. St. Louis wins 5-2. to two. Game 4 on October 8th in St. Louis. Cardinals 6, Boston nothing. Three games of one lead. Oh, do they win the World Series at home? Let's find out. Game 5 October 9th in St. Louis. Boston 3, St. Louis 1. So now we got a three games of two lead. Go back to Boston. Game 6 October 11th in Boston. Red Sox 8, St. Louis 4. Now we got a series tied at 3. And Game 7, October 12th in Boston. Cardinals 7, Boston 2. St. Louis wins the World Series 4 games to 3. 
that St. Louis was the first team to go up three games in one, have the World Series tied at three, and then wins the World's ends up winning the World Series. So crazy, huh? Okay, the notes for the World Series. This is the first time the Commissioner's Trophy was awarded. And the first dibs go to the St. Louis Cardinals. Bob Gibson gave up 14 hits in three complete games. Tied Christy Matthews in for the fewest hits allowed. Ken Brett, who's the older brother of George Brett. He'll, he'll be mentioned later. Ken Brett is the youngest pitcher in World Series history at 19 years and 20 days old. He pitched one and a third innings of relief in two appearances. It's pretty good. Actually, I think he's, I didn't write put down how, how I didn't write down how well he did. So, but that was an interesting little tidbit there. So, that's the 1967 season. Tomorrow is the 1968 season. Do we see St. Louis in the World Series again? If so, who do they, who do they play? Who and what happens during the '68 season? What happens in Oakland? And rumors of a possible expansion. So there you go. That's 1968, 1967 season. Until tomorrow, stay tuned.